What's up y'all? I'm Tom and this is Like a Math Class. In this video we're going to talk about increasing and decreasing functions or more specifically how to determine on what intervals a function is increasing or decreasing. Let's get to it. A function is considered increasing when it has a positive slope and a function is considered decreasing when it has a negative slope. Now here we've got some function that we're defining as f of x and I've highlighted a few key points here for us and really we need to figure out where does this thing have a positive slope and where does it have a negative slope. We can determine the slope at any point along this curve by finding the tangent line and looking at what the slope is of the tangent line. For example, if we've got a, uh, a tangent line that's going through right here, we can see that this has a positive slope because it's going upwards here. And we can see uh, as we go, uh, as we are going down this way, we've got a negative slope. So here we've got a negative slope because we're going down. And at this point over here, we would also have a positive slope along here. And then it looks like we might have a negative slope over here. As we go around here then, we see here we've got positive slopes and they're gonna be getting shallower and shallow, uh, more and more uh, shallow in their steepness. And then here we're gonna have a horizontal line, a horizontal tangent, and that's got a slope of zero. And then all the way down here, we're gonna have a negative slope. And then again, we're gonna have a positive slope and a negative. So as we look at this, the intervals on which we are positive, I'll mark with the blue, we kind of have that curve there, and the, the, the spots or the intervals where we have a negative slope are right here. So what we would say is it, this function f of x is increasing from, let's see, it's gonna be positive slope from negative infinity. So this has got the arrow, it's saying it's gonna go on this way forever. So from negative infinity all the way up to negative three. So from negative infinity to negative three and Remember, we, we do this, this notation. This means it does not include. This means it's including negative three. So from this interval, it is increasing. And then from two, uh, from two to seven, from the x value of two to the x value of seven, it is also increasing from two to seven. Um, another way that we can write this is this is increasing. We can use kind of using set notation here. Another way you might write this is negative infinity to negative three union with uh, or in, uh, along with uh, two seven. So that's another way that you could say that it's increasing. Now it's decreasing from negative three, the x value of negative three, all the way down to two. So f of x is decreasing from negative three to two and then again from here, from this x value of seven, on to positive infinity. From seven to positive infinity. So again, using set notation, we'll have negative three to two union with seven to infinity. That's how we can write this in terms of set notation or just writing the intervals. To be more precise, we can say that f of x is increasing on a domain where f prime, the derivative of x, is greater than zero for all the values in that domain. So if we, if we have a derivative and we put in the values in that interval, it's going to produce a positive slope. And that will then say we have an increasing function. Or uh, to, to say that it's decreasing, we've got the domain as less than or equal to zero. Now, some people get caught up in uh, why, why are we including the zero for both of these? And the reason that we can say included here is because we're talking about intervals. We're not talking about specific values. So it's really just saying on this interval. So we go up to and include that just to say uh, that we're talking about that interval. We're not talking about specific values. Some textbooks might say that you do not include uh, the values where the slope is zero. So it kind of depends on 
textbook to textbook, publisher to publisher, but really understand that we're not talking about specific values. We're talking about a whole uh, domain of values, a whole, a whole interval of values. Let's look at an example of what this might look like. Find the domain on which the intervals of the function of this is increasing or decreasing. Now, we don't, let's say we don't have a calculator, so we can't graph this thing. So we have to figure out how can we use our derivatives in order to find these intervals where this thing is increasing or decreasing. And we're gonna use what's called a sign diagram to help us determine those intervals. The first thing that we have to do is find some key, uh, the first thing we need to do is find the derivative and then we need to find some key points on our function like we've done up here when we saw where are the intervals changing from positive to negative. So we have to find where the function has uh, minimums or maximums, or we have to find where the derivative has a slope of zero, where the, the result is zero. So again, let's say we don't have a graphing calculator. We're not gonna pull out our calculator. We're gonna try and figure this out using a sign diagram. So first things first, let's find the derivative g prime of x is going to be equal to 6x squared plus 12x uh, minus 0. So 6x squared plus 12x. And we want to use this to find where are these values equal to 0. We want to see where are the minimums and maximums for this function. So we need to set this value equal to 0. We want the slope of this thing, we want the output of this to be 0 so we can find what x values make this thing 0. So we're going to say that this is 0 and we're going to look at 6x squared plus 12x. Where is that equal to 0? And as we do some quick factoring, we can see that we've got 6x and that's going to be times x plus 2. So we know that our intervals are, we know that our minimums and maximums are going to be where 6x equals 0 and where x plus 2 equals 0, or quite simply where x equals 0 and where x equals negative 2. So those are going to be the points where we've got minimums or maximums. And if we go back and look at this function, this is a positive cubic function. So we know we know just from looking at this or from our, our study of functions that this is going to be some function that's going to look like this. So we're going to have our, our maximum and our minimum. So we could actually probably guess that where this, at this point here, we're going to have positive slopes going up this way and we're going to have positive slopes going up this way with some negative slopes going down this way. Or as we highlight it, going up to here, up to that maximum value, we're gonna have positive slopes. And from this minimum value on up, we're gonna have positive slopes. And then of course, in this middle section, that's gonna be where we have our negative slopes. So you might be able to figure this out just doing a little bit of function analysis. But let's look at a tool, because in our second example, we're going to look at what happens if we can't so easily uh, break down the function and we need to do a little bit more analysis. So let's practice our sine diagram with this. So our sine diagram is quite simply uh, a, a number line and on this number line we are going to put the key points of this function and in this case the key points are going to be the maximum value, the x value for the maximum and the x value for the minimum. And so if we put our number line here, negative two and zero, these are our x values. And what we wanna do is we wanna check where is f prime of x positive or negative. We can probably already guess, we can make a hypo our hypothesis that this is going to be positive here and this is gonna be positive here with our red section uh, being negative. Again, positive slope, negative slope, positive slope. But how do, we, how do we confirm this? What we'll do is we'll just take a random value over here in the negative range or smaller than negative two to the left of this key value. We know this is going to be a maximum value because it's got a slope of zero. A slope of zero again looks like this. So I'm gonna pick any value. Now I like to pick values that are easy to work with. So I'm gonna put g, uh, g prime of negative 10. And I just chose negative 10 because that's going to give me a nice, easy numbers to work with in here that I can kind of do my mental math with. So negative 10. So I'm going to have 6 times negative 10 squared. 
6 times negative 10 squared plus 12 times negative 10. Plus 12 times negative 10. All right, so I'm going to have six, one, 10, negative 10 squared is 100 times 6. So there's 600. And then 12 times 10 is, uh, times a negative 10 is negative 120. So I don't actually care what the result is going to be, but I could see that I've got a higher positive number than I do a negative, or I'm going to end up with a positive result. So I know that this will be positive. So I know that this will indeed be a positive result, which means we have a positive slope. I'm going to do the same thing uh, in the middle here. So now let's say uh, I could pick any value. I'm going to choose a negative one. Again, I could pick a negative one third if I want, but that may not be really as easy to work with in here. So I'm going to just pick a nice easy number, negative one. And you know, the other thing I like to do sometimes as well is, is these numbers that I'm, I'm substituting in here, sometimes I like to, to put them down, uh, down here just to show which ones I'm actually going to do. And I'm just going to pick these values. And so I kind of keep these. These are the x values that I'm using to check my work over here. So now we're going to check g prime of negative 1. That's going to be 6 times negative 1 squared plus 12 times negative 1. Again, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive. So I've got 6 plus, sorry, 6 minus 12. So I'm going to end up with a negative value. So in here, I'm going to have a negative value, a negative slope. And then, of course, when I put positive 10 into my function, I am going to see that I have another positive result because it's basically going to be very similar to the one that I did up above. So here with my sign diagram, I have determined that these are the intervals on which this function is increasing or decreasing. Uh, g of x, g of x is increasing on the interval of negative infinity to negative 2 and 0 to positive infinity. g of x is decreasing on the interval of negative 2 to 0. So here's our decreasing, our red values. Here's our increasing, our positive slopes. Again, you know, I guess if, if I were staying consistent, I would have used uh, closed brackets on these, these values here. You know, as you're looking from textbook to textbook, you might see that they use a closed bracket, they use an open bracket for these intervals. Um, you know, a math professor might come back and say, look, dude, what are you doing? You're, you're not being very uh, precise here. You're not being super accurate with this. But I, I, for our purposes for the IB exam, I, I honestly don't think it will be. And if it is, I will come back and I'll put a comment below or in the description to say, Caster, you were wrong about this. Um, all right, so let's look at one more example. In this example, we're going to use the sine diagram to determine on which intervals this function, ooh, that's a big function, is increasing or decreasing. So here's what you might need to do. You might need to go back and do a quick refresher on rational functions, how to find the zeros for these things, how to find the domains of these things, the, the, the functions that, uh, the pieces that you work with, with a rational function. The other thing you're going to want to do is hit the like button. And the last thing you're going to want to do is come see us in the next video where we go through the solution for this. I'll see you there.